Hey guys, it's Adam from Tested, and I heard you. We heard you here at Tested. We know you love the one day builds, and so do we. And here comes one right now. But we also promise that more one day builds will be coming more frequently starting now. And today's is really, really cool. Uh, still very popular is the Secret Santa Nerf mod I did last Christmas. And today is another Nerf mod. This is without a doubt my favorite Nerf gun I have ever seen. It is the Nerf Rival and it fires a hundred shots in a row out of this hopper. This is what it fires, these little yellow foam balls. Ooh, perfect. Um, but a hundred shots in a row is nifty, but maybe improvable. So I want to modify the Nerf Rival so it fires a thousand shots in a row. Uh-huh, I'm gonna make a much bigger hopper and I will also aestheticize this. Here comes today's one day build Nerf mod. Now the folks at Nerf are geniuses at firing safe projectiles in innovative ways and the mechanism of the rival is actually worth going into some detail about because I'm really impressed with it. Uh, the basic mechanism for firing these balls operates like a pitching machine. Um, right on the other side of these two panels are two spinning wheels that when the ball gets to them, thunk, it shoves them out, just like a pitching machine. But how it gets the balls to those spinning wheels is even cooler. So there's a couple of parts to it. On the left side here, you see these little gear wheels. And then on the right side, you see that little black belt. So what happens is when you fill this hopper full of balls, you pull the first trigger, which is down here. And you hear that? That's the wheels spinning up. Then you pull the second trigger and that activates these agitating wheels and the conveyor belt. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Sorry, Joey. So here is my overall plan uh, for the mechanical aspect of this. The hopper that fires the balls, there it is. That's the whole thing. This holds a hundred balls. I'm going to add a magazine onto this that holds a thousand balls. Um, in addition, I have some other mods I want to do. I've got some Picatinny rails, a red dot scope, and some other aesthetic details that I've drawn out. But first and foremost, I need to figure out how big these magazines should be. And so I need to do some volumetric testing with the thousand. Wow, that feels really cool. Uh, first, I need to work out the volume of how big these magazines need to be to hold a thousand shots. I have a couple of pristine pieces of foam core here. Let's say... Well, this is going to be great. Woo! Okay. <laughs> That's heavy. <laughs> All right, that just comes up to here. Yeah, I like the dimensions of that better. Let's see what I got here.
Oh, wow. I got it kind of exactly right. So by my volumetric estimation, this size for a magazine is awesome, but it is only holds 900 balls. So uh, it needs to be a little longer. So 3.3 inches taller. So it needs to be 34 inches. Let's say 34 inches, 34 inches. Um, I am not doing a single magazine. Oh no, I'm not doing a single magazine. I'm doing a double magazine, a double magazine, which means that half of 34 is 17. <laughs> that took me longer than it should have. <laughs> yeah. So now we're getting into the design because I'm not gonna make these straight magazines. Oh no, I have bigger plans. I'm gonna make these curved magazines. Cause come on, it's gotta look, it's gotta look the part. One more sheet of foam card just to figure out the exact curve. And then, and then, and then I'm gonna start cutting this out of acrylic. Yeah. Da, 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 da. So here's what we're gonna have is we're gonna have one magazine on this side and one magazine on this side, right? Like like that, like a like a flying V. I thought they might be upright, but no, no, no. Now I think they're gonna be like this. That's gonna be freaking fantastic. That's, I'm really excited about that. All right. I also noticed that with the completely parallel sides, when I tried to dump this out, the, um, the balls got stuck in there. So that tells me that actually, I want my magazine to be thinner at the top and wider at the bottom. Uh-huh. I'm gonna cut out four pieces of eighth inch acrylic that are gonna be the main body of the magazine. This is a fascinating mathematical problem. My question is, I'm going to cut out a strip here that's 17 inches long, 
and I'm going to cut out a strip here that's 29 and a quarter inches long. And they both taper from the bottom to the top. But I, and I, actually, I can just choose. It, it's a gradual taper. I just need to cut two strips 29 and a quarter long and two strips 17 long and then figure out what this end distance is and what this end distance is and then draw a straight taper between those. That's pretty straightforward. Okay. Since the sides of my magazines are curved, uh, I need a bend in my uh, acrylic and it just resists that a little too much for me. So. I have a lab oven that we bought for the shop that will heat this plastic up to a nice gentle 150 degrees Fahrenheit and soften it so I can get it to make a curve. Okay, so there's those two pieces. Let's just let those sit for a few minutes and see how they do. There are a lot of different approaches I could have taken to making this curved box. I'm taking like the fastest, kind of sloppiest way because these will be in a V, so you won't be able to necessarily see if they don't perfectly match each other. The edges I'm gonna clean up and they will be a little bit rough around the edges, but I'll hide those crimes with some other techniques. So I'm basically moving for speed rather than, uh, than perfection. I, I could make this box a lot nicer if I had to, but I don't have to. I only have a day to build this, so we're moving quickly. All right, well, my first magazine is mostly glued up and I'm quite happy with it. Um, again, it's sloppy, but we'll clean it up. I've done a basic uh, uh, weld on thin weld bond number three here. I am now going to pull this out of its holder and I'm gonna add some weld on 16 on the inside up here for structural strength before I, for structural strength, for structure, before I pull off all the tape. Meanwhile, I'm gonna throw the other two pieces of plastic that are the curved sides of the magazine into my lab oven and we'll get the second one going. This is all going really well. I'm very pleased with how this looks. One and two. Okay. Weld on 16 is a thick weld bond. Weld bond means that it melts both sides of the material it's gluing. Um, and Weld on 16 is effectively model airplane glue. They're, they're pretty much the same thing. And it's the same thing as Weld on 3. It just happens to be thicker. It's got more plastic in it. I believe it's got plastic in it. Or I've actually reached the limit of my knowledge of Weld on 16. But um, it will set up and provide some genuine structure here in the corners. And we should be able to pull it out after lunch. Lunch? Yeah, we actually do take lunch here. The other thing that Weld On 16 does is it bridges gaps. Like the thin weld bond does not bridge gaps very well. Um, whereas the thick stuff does. And I do have some gaps in here because I did not build it incredibly perfectly. All right, I have cut one magazine out and it is, I, we talked about this before. It's not pretty, but it will do the job for what I need it to do. But I also just wanna see how many balls this actually holds. Ah, ah. It's a very comforting sound, isn't it? It's like distant Nerf thunder. Holy crap, I seem to have overestimated. <laughs> well, so the plan was that each magazine held 500 balls, but this is a thousand. I, I, I kind of knew it was gonna hold more than 500. I made it a little bit wider, but because this material is thinner than the foam core that I was using, clearly I way, way missed my mark. But this is not a bad thing. Um, it's actually a really good thing. I've been thinking about a flying V of, 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 of magazines and the problem I have with it is that I've got 
the two volumes meeting above the hopper and I'm worried that they'll get clogged up with each other and that the agitator inside the hopper won't be agitating enough to actually cause a free flow of balls down into the hopper. So the fact that one magazine holds all thousand is actually really good. So I'm gonna go with a single magazine. I'm gonna modify my design a little bit. I'm gonna go with a single magazine. Um, and the other thing that's really nice about it is this first magazine that I made is really sloppy and the second one is much cleaner. Uh, I've often said in the past that whenever I make something, I usually make two or three of it so I can screw things up. Uh, that's what happened right here. This is not the pretty magazine. This is not the pretty magazine. This is the pretty magazine. That's the one I'm going to use. So the next stage is to pull this out of its clamps, trim it, and then attach it to my hopper. All right, here we go. Want to hear the sound again? It's a lovely sound. I hear you're asking, what is that thing? What is that? This is a plexiglass scoring uh, tool, specifically for working with acrylic or perspex for our friends over the pond. <clears throat> um, yeah, it just uh, allows me to round out this edge. And this is uh, really looking pretty gorgeous. So number one, I can glue this down. Right? Yeah, I can totally glue that down. And then it's always going to, yeah. Okay, so there's that. One, two is there. That's, that's what we got to do. That's, that's, that's what we have to do here. So, <laughs> can you tell I'm in the excited part? So I want that to be glued down there. I'm just bypassing one of the safety mechanisms here. Well, it could be the title of my autobiography. <laughs> hey, fires with an open hopper. <laughs> All right, so cool. Now, this is, yeah, this is the exciting part. I know I get to cut this thing up so that it fits all this. I can't make it offset like this because I can't build that much structure. You know what? So I had this beautiful red dot scope that I was very excited about, but I may have to make it a parallax scope. I, so, sorry, I haven't filled you in on all of my thought process. I went from a double magazine system to a single magazine system. So originally it was gonna be a flying V, one here, one here. Now I thought, uh, since they both fit a thousand, I'm just gonna use one and maybe I'll just do a single side of the V so that I can still see past this with my red dot scope. <clears throat> but I'm gonna be running around in a skirmish, a theoretical skirmish with like this much weight hanging off of this thing. That's a recipe for disaster. I want my weight upright and center. So I am going to do it like this. Yeah, yeah, yep. Let's say down to about there. And this one too. And I gotta keep this upright, which is non-trivial. <sighs> Good, I'm inside of all the structural members here. Time for cutting. That is nice. It feels like this is actually acrylic, which is good. It'll mean, it means it'll glue nicely to what I've already got. But let's see here. Uh, yes, yes. Oh, yeah! <laughs> Dude, I did not expect on the first blush for that cut to go so well. 
That is really awesome. I'm very pleased with how this all kind of gels. That's kind of incredible. Okay, so I don't have any, yeah, no, this is, this is, this is, yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think about what I might have done wrong because when something goes like this well on the first blush, I've always expected somewhere along the line I've messed something else up, but I don't think I have. So I think I'm going to start getting some glue on this puppy to hold it together. Normally for a build like this, I would use a weld bond for this as well, but I want a little more structure out of it. So I'm actually using cyanoacrylate, but instead of just straight uh, accelerator, that's this stuff, the spray accelerator that kicks CA glue really fast. I'm using baking soda and I'm doing that because it'll actually provide me almost some like genuine gusseted strength. That is the biggest structural problem of the whole thing. How to get the magazine onto the gun full of balls. Uh, and I believe that I have achieved it. Moment of truth time, one of several. Here we go. So that comes in, that comes in. It locks. <laughs> oh, I love absurdity. Okay, cool. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's, um, that is what we call working. Remember I said we were going to hide some crimes? That's what I'm about to do now. It's time to take care of some of the aesthetics of this. I'm also gonna make a lid for the magazine so it can be closed. Um, and I'm going to uh, clean up that little nerny. A few more hours of work and we should be well along our way. Fifteen, thirty. All right. Now it's time for some detailing. The uh, the gun itself is already pretty gorgeous, but I'm going to add some. Uh, I'm going to kit bash it. That's what's going to happen. Kit bashing. Have I talked about kit bashing before? I think I have, but it's worth covering again. Kit bashing is the process of adding detail to a model by using existing model kits. So you're using the parts and pieces of other model kits for purposes they were never intended. Kit bashing is how all the Star Wars spaceships were built. It's how, uh, you know, to, oh, 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 yeah, those will be nice. Um, it's, you know, an industrial light and magic I kit bashed on a daily basis, and it was heavenly. Ooh, look at this. Ah, oh, I've got some good stuff here. Oh, <laughs> mm. yeah, I have some special stash for my kit bashing habit. What you do to one side, you want to do to the other. That one's gorgeous. That's it. Bye. Yeah, yeah, yeah.
<laughs> okay. Yeah, that's good. That's not bad. Yeah, nice and solid. I'm very pleased with the solidity. So I have some things to add to this. I got a bipod that I want to put on the front. And then I've got some Picatinny rails to attach to it. I've got a red dot scope. Maybe I put a Picatinny rail off to the side so I can see it. You know, or on the, ooh, maybe even on the magazine. Like that. I have to admit to you, I was thinking about just masking this and painting this because I'm feeling lazy and like I didn't want to have to understand this whole construction in order to take it apart. But to be honest, the value you get out of taking a thing apart in order to paint it is significant and real. So I'm going to do it. Here, will you shake this for me? The thing about masking is that it's astonishingly tedious. If it's tedious to you, it means you're doing it right. Masking just takes time and there's no other way around it. But the rewards it gives, the dividends it pays is really significant. So what I've liked is on the, uh, on the gun here, I like these, these details on both sides and they feel like, they feel like heat shrouds, like they're separated from the heat of the main gun. So I'm gonna paint them a bright silver uh, falling off to black. The rest of the gun will remain red and it'll look like the thing gets really hot and you hold on to the silver parts to protect yourself from the heat, like a shield. Then I'll take a wash and I'll get inside all of these holes. Uh, it's shaping up really nicely. This is a really fun one. So if I surround each of the masked areas with black before hitting it with silver, I actually hide a lot of my crimes of masking because the black goes into the interstices and hides where my masking wasn't perfect. It just goes dark. Yep. All right, let's see here. Yep, 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 okay. Yep. Okay, I get all that. I get all that. I think I did. All right, here we go. Hi ho, silver. I think that's pretty good. Like I said, it's not perfect, but I'll be able to hide some of those crimes later on. Okay, it's time to take off a whole bunch of this masking and see how we're doing. 
Even taking masking off, while well, lots more fun than putting it on, is tedious. Also, I don't know what your shop is like, but if it's anything like my shop, as soon as you're done making a big ball of tape that you've peeled off something, it's really important that you throw it at somebody. I'm kidding. Throw it to them so that you can play catch. Yeah, that's feeling pretty good. I like that. I'm very pleased with that. Oh, oh yeah, there we go. Ah, that's good enough. So, <laughs> what am I missing? What am, oh my God, frack, I totally forgot. <laughs> is shaping up. See? Isn't that cool? Oh, dude. Okay. All right. Here we go. Moment of truth. Time to fill the magazine. I'm pretty happy with how this whole thing looks. It's been a genuine one day build. One day, this, is, this is one of those ones that's actually a day. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the 1,000 shot Nerf Rival Magazine. Okay, put this in. Oh, this is <laughs> so psyched. Ah. There, wait, 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 I gotta turn on my sight. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Bum bum, dun dun. Mm. I got a Vipod, I got a red dot sight, I got a Nerf gun, and I got a thousand rounds of ammunition. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> No good build is complete without a proper test, and I've come to 3210 Productions in Marin County, California, where I used to work, actually, uh, to do the test of the ultimate Nerf mod. Today's quarry, dinosaurs. <laughs> Oh. 
All right, take a break, dinosaurs. <laughs> My my arm is getting exhausted. You haven't gone through like a fifth of that yet. No. Ah! You have to shake it every now and then. It's a lot of weight, the foam ball. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm actually getting tired.